Hey, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use Framer's new forms feature in a really quick and concise video, so this should only take around five minutes, hopefully. So we've got a blank page here, we're going to come up to the inset icon in the top right and come down to forms. You can see this is new form builder component, which we're going to click and drag onto our page. Awesome. It comes with a few preset labels and inputs. I'm going to quickly run through these and the different types of inputs you can add. So this element here is a label. Inside you've got a title or a name. And then you've got your input type, which is where the magic happens. This whole thing is called a form. And we'll start by looking at the form and where your content will redirect to and where you can send it. So if we scroll down to form, there we go. <laughs> We've got two options. The one is send to, and this is what we're going to look at now. So send to is where your data goes. When someone hits submit, you can either send it to an email, which will send to your personal email or whatever email you link the form to. You can name the subject line. So what it will come into your inbox as and the body text. You've just received a new submission. So that's as simple as is, and you'll receive all the data inside your email. And then you can link it to any webhook. So Zapier, for example, you just drop in your API URL, and we can go into this in a later video. Or oh, if there's any specific webhook you need help with, please let us know. We'll leave this one for now. And then finally, which is super cool, is that you can link it to Google Sheets. When you link it to Google Sheets, click connect, it will prompt you to log into Google and select a Google Sheet from this drop down, and it will populate the Google Sheet in a tabular format. So name will have a column, email will have a column, location will have a column, and then you'll see your inputs in rows, which is really fun and a really interesting way to gather data and manipulate data as it arrives. So that's where send to goes, and that's how you can link your form. So I'm going to actually link this to email just to start with, so I can show you some success states later on. And then while we're here, I'll show you redirect. Redirect allows you to redirect this user to a new page once they've hit submit. So if I've hit submit, instead of showing thank you when this form's been submitted, it will take me to a success page or a page where a download starts or a locked page only subscribers can view. So that's a really great opportunity for marketing purposes, lead gen purposes, and a really fun aspect. Then we'll quickly go through input types. If you click on your form and click the plus at the bottom, this is how you add new inputs. So we've got four different types. We've got text, which is similar to this email, and if you click on input, you can see there's multiple different types of input. So email, text area, which is a large text area, which can be, you can toggle the height of. Text, which is just a solid text area. Then we've got number, which only recognize numbers. Phone numbers, which will only recognize phone numbers. URLs, date, which gives you a date selector. And time, which is form formatted into time. So that's really great, how it recognizes different types of content. And then we have checkboxes, which is what you'd expect. The really great part about checkboxes is that you can add inline links. So if I make this accept privacy policy, highlight privacy policy only, and add a link, I'll paste in my privacy policy or link it to my privacy policy page, and adjust the style maybe Right now it's pink, but I want to make it blue. And you can change the hover state and the current color of it. Then when you hit preview, you can see that only this element is linked and that will take you to the new page. So that's checkboxes and you can obviously use checkboxes for, for anything. And then we have radio buttons, which are obviously single select options. And then we have our select, which is our select drop down. So if we quickly look at this right now, if I click preview, you can see that 
It's a location drop down and there's multiple options I can select from. To do this, click on the select input, come to the input section and you can see here there's three options. So select is our default and that is our title. There's no value associated with that because it's just telling the user what to do. But we have Amsterdam, we can see the value is Amsterdam. So that is the value you'll see in your Google Sheet or in your email or through your webhook. And the title is Amsterdam, that's what the user sees. So if I add another one, I'll make the title London and the value London. And then when I hit preview and come down, London is now an option. And then finally, I'll quickly go over hover states. In a later video, we'll look at componentizing these input types and advanced form features. But for now, we'll quickly click on this input. We'll come down to styles and you can see there is a focus style section at the bottom, which has an effect on it at the moment. I want to change this. I want to make the fill white. I'll leave the border. Maybe I'll make it a little darker. And this is what happens when the user clicks on the field. I want to add a shadow. So let's add a really fun blue shadow. Bring the opacity up. We'll give it a 20 blur and a minus 10 spread and a transition, which we'll just leave as default. And then when I'm using my text box, this was the previous focus view and this is my custom focus view. So you can really make this personalized to your branding to make it as cool as you want. And then finally, we have our submit button. This is actually a component in itself because there's different states. So if we go over to assets, we can see the button is sitting here and we have a few states. So we've got our default, submit, hover. So you might want to change this, for example. So if we change this to have a fill of red, I wouldn't suggest red, but maybe you want it to be red <laughs> and then pressed. And then we have loading, what it looks like if there's a bit of buffer time there might not be, but if there is, you can put a loading icon here. At the moment, it says it's loading and then disabled if the button isn't working. Success. This is if you don't redirect your user anywhere, what the button will say once the form has been sent and then obviously error. So if we jump back to home, we will see now that we have a hover state, press state, which I can't press because I haven't filled anything in. <laughs> Let's fill this in, submit, there was my loading and thank you. And that is everything you need to know about Framer Forms to get started. If there's anything else you'd need to know or anything else on Framer you'd like to learn, feel free to drop us a comment and we will make the video for you and help you out. That's it from me today and I will speak to you soon. Bye!